Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. Today we're going to talk about timing. Timing. Hmm, timing. Some say it's divine. I say it's weird. Very strange. Timing is strange, isn't it? I'm sure there's a pattern, right? To time, there's like a rhythm. I'm sure there's all sorts of cool scientific explanations as to why things happen when they happen. Maybe that's really what this Sunday morning coffee is about. Why do things happen when they happen? Oh, okay, so it's been really hot here. And you know I like the heat, right? I love when it's hot. And... I, when I got home last night, I was like, hey, it's hot in here. And, oh, yeah, it is kind of hot in here was the response. And so there was some checking that was done on the air conditioning and the out, turns off the outdoor, like, heat pump thing, electric thing wasn't quite working or something. So something was reset and it seemed to be working. I'm not so sure. I'm really not so sure. It was quite hot last night. <laughs> and it wasn't bad, actually. It was comfortable after a while. You know, fans going and such. But the timing is interesting because I had just booked a trip to Disney World. Oh, yeah. Yep. I'm going to go for a couple, maybe three, four days, four days. I think it is. I can't remember how many days. I am going to do it. I've been debating for over a month. I've been itching to travel for about six months now. And so I'm going to. And I was really not sure if I wanted to spend the money on that now. There's other things I want to be purchasing and using my funds for. I'm sure you all can relate to this. And so I wanted to make a good, a solid adult decision. So I stressed about it for like five days. Oh, easily longer than that. But the last couple of days, it was kind of more so. I think it was last Wednesday. I decided I wasn't going to go or Thursday, something like that. I was like, yeah, I'm not going I'm not doing that. I don't want to go to Disney and be sad. And I know you're thinking, Bridget, why would you go someplace that you love so much and be sad? Well, it's the timing. It's the timing. It's the timing on so many levels. It's the timing. So it got me to thinking this morning. As I'm walking early because it's going to be all hot and humid today and maybe even stormy here, which I kind of like the weather. I'm kind of cool with that. As long as it's not damaging, I'm okay with the weather. And I to get my walk in early. It's so peaceful in the morning, you know. And it reminds me of almost an early spring day. You can probably hear the birds and things in the background, but... It's not really hot. I have a a hoodie on. I had to wear a hoodie for my walk. Crazy. Timing, right? Seasons. Timing. So here's what I think about this topic. I think that time is an easy way to measure. It's a way that we can collectively understand our human experience. We share a clock. Although our time zones might be different. (laughs) Heck, even in some parts of the world, our days are different. But we share a certain rhythm to things. And our brain understands this. And our body responds to it. The sun rises, we wake up. The sun sets, we go to sleep. There's a rhythm to things. For the most part. And our bodies will age with this rhythm. Years will go by, days and weeks and months, 
we'll celebrate milestones, graduations, anniversaries, birthdays, memories. And we seem to categorize these life things based on time. We can associate them with a particular date on our calendar, which we all share. And we have reminders, sensory reminders from our environment. Maybe it was the springtime or it was just after the first of the year or it was in the autumn when the wind turned chill just before winter and the ground was wet and damp and the leaves coated it in. Like those things, those cues, those sensory things help us to then feel into time passing. So maybe we measure time so we can see what we've lost. Maybe part of the purpose of time is to understand and appreciate life, such as with these milestones I mentioned. Or maybe time is about, <laughs> or maybe time is really about giving us perspective. Really giving us a sense of how important it is that we are here now. Maybe time emphasizes like an exclamation mark, the moment. There's been so many spiritual teachers and personal development gurus that have talked about for years about being present, how to get present, how to be present in the time, in, the, in this moment, in time. And it seems like it's something only for the few to master, and yet many of us attempt. And there are moments when we are exactly on time, in the right time right here, right now for that event, for that experience, for that first step, for that happy smile, for that awesome hug, for that great kiss. Maybe time is something that we share. Maybe that's part of what makes it so special or important. Maybe it's an exchange, a way that we communicate value. Oh yes, yes, had not done that one. Value, if someone gives you their time, they spend time with you, they make you a priority and give you their attention. During that time, those times you feel, certainly feel quite special, quite important. Assuming this is a, a good, kind of exchange <laughs> during that time. So maybe time is a gift. It's something we give other people and a show of appreciation, gratitude, or love. Maybe time is really at its roots about love. But if that were the case, wouldn't it be unconditional? Wouldn't time be unconditional? And in a sense, isn't it actually unconditional? Is time unconditional? Although I've articulated the parameters of time, the boundaries of time in a sense, or the structure of it, maybe the structure we could say. Calendar, clock, sunlight, daylight, etc. Maybe time really is flexible, expansive, abundant. If we didn't measure it, 
maybe it wouldn't feel so limiting. Maybe we wouldn't attach it to grief and loss, but rather to life and love. That sounds good. So let's explore this whole unconditionality part of time. And is time love? Let me just ask. Hmm. I want to ask my spirit guides about that one. Is time love? It can be. It's in part an expression of because you're in relationship with it. There are some common shared understandings about time and expectation, which is natural in any relationship. And there are also boundaries. So just because something is unconditional, like unconditional love, for example, it doesn't mean there's no boundaries. It doesn't mean there's no expectations. It doesn't mean you just accept whatever, just because you love and that's an excuse to, for whatever. Or an out for bad behavior. Yet, the showing up part of things, the showing up for related to time, I think is connected to this understanding of love. Yes. Oh, I see that. If time and time is connected to showing up, being present, being there, being here, being now, being with life. That's love. We show up. Regardless of what you feel that day. Oh, you're tired. Oh, too bad. Time doesn't care about that. Does the person you love care that you didn't show up? Um, yes. They're not going to care about your excuses. Neither will time. But I don't think time will judge or evaluate us like that or hold us to task or hold us to accountability at all. I think time is much more, even though we think of it as this rigid or this more structurized kind of thing, if we think about it more as a pattern, as a rhythm, as a guide to our day, to, to our shared life experience, it feels like then there is a lot of unconditionality in that. Because if there's a common understanding, a basic just common understanding of the flow of things, then there aren't really these deeper, intensive, emotional, or even sensory limitations to them. In fact, the emotional connections and the sensory pieces can actually help support the understanding of time as a supporter of our experience, a lens in which we are operating, not even in, it's not like a box, but it's more with, like a flow, like a current, like a river, like that. Like the water element. What if time is more like the water element? Are you with me here? There's all these different little bubbles of thought that are popping in here <laughs> this morning. And I will divulge to you the fact that I have not had my Sunday morning coffee. I have not had it yet. I was debating. I was trying to decide if I wanted to do tea this morning, trying to be a little more chill and mellow for my day as I start my day. Or if I wanted to go right into the coffee. I'm trying to be a little more chill, so I did not have my coffee yet, but I will, I promise. So what do you think about time? It's interesting, isn't it? And you know, when I talk to you about concepts like this, I'm not really talking about measurement <laughs> in the form of like scientific things or, or um, metaphysics and jumping timelines and all that. I'm not really talking about that here in Sunday Morning Coffee in this episode about timing. I'm talking more about the rhythm. I'm talking more about the relationship in what we are given, this gift of our lives, and knowing that time is running out. It is. It is moving. There are, are going to be new days that come ahead, whether you're ready for them or not. And if you can't get your act together and show up for them, you are going to miss out and you are missing out already now. And I know because I feel that myself. So many people say that when you have kids, it goes really fast. I thought they were full of crap. 
Because in those toddler years, those elementary school years, and those times when you're traveling to soccer or baseball or whatever the heck you're doing, the bake sales and the volunteer stuff in the classroom or camping or whatever you're doing with the kids, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work to show up day in and day out. And yet one day it seems like you wake up and you look back and you go, oh my gosh, it's, it's all gone. It's done. Those times when they were so reliant on you, so in need of you to manage, coordinate, drive, handle life for them, around them, so that they could be where they needed to be and have the experiences that would enrich their lives and support their lives. And you right there as a part of all of it. I just go really fast. And one day you wake up and three of your kids are out of high school. That would be me. Three of the four out of school. And there's this interesting state that I feel like I'm in where I feel like I'm just starting my life. I have my whole life ahead of me. And yet I have the benefit of having lived all of this time. And the timing and the rhythm and the nature of things when people have come into my life, when opportunities, when jobs, when, when I've met friends, when I've had relationships, when my children were born, when I've moved, when I've had life, just life experiences, good and bad, all the mix. I have all of that knowledge and wisdom from all of this time that I've lived with me for now, while I then look as to what's ahead? What do I want? What do I want my time to be spent on? Who do I want to spend my time with? Maybe these are questions you're asking yourself. What do I want to be spending my time on? If time is such a valuable commodity and a gift, like breath, like air itself, then maybe we should start looking at it like that, as more precious. Not scarce, not lacking, but precious, special, unique. So when you go on a trip with a friend, it matters. When you go to your kid's choir concert, it matters. When you're visiting someone in a hospital bed, it matters. When you write that book, it matters. Timing really is everything. And there is a trust in the universe that is required. Because the rhythm of the grids of time are hard to understand and not one person is the master of them. They're definitely magical, they're definitely workable, they're definitely co-creative, and you have to have trust in the fact that the timing of things will work out. Maybe not right now. Maybe you want something so bad and it's just not feasible in this moment. It doesn't mean it's never going to happen. It doesn't mean it's not ever going to be. Just because it's not right here, right now, it doesn't mean it won't exist in your life and it won't be here and present for you. It's just all about the rhythm of the timing. So for now, flow, keep flowing, keep moving, keep jumping into the alignment of the preciousness of the moments of time and really feel yourself in a place of gratitude and expansion and value for the time. So when someone is giving you their time, they're respecting your time. They're showing up for you, with you, in a moment. Put your phone down and pay attention. Look at that human. Be in that moment. That's true connection. Maybe that's the unconditional part of time. All right, all right, all right, okay. Oh, who is that? Oh, I think we just had Matthew McConaughey step in at the end of Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. All right, all right, all right. Okay.
<laughs> uh, I think I'm hilarious. So, hey, thanks for listening to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. I hope I've inspired your spirit today, filled you with some hope. At least gotten you curious about these interesting random thoughts I have about time. Timing is everything. Indeed, that can be very, very true. Very true. So don't wait. Show up. Tell somebody you love them. Take a risk. Take a chance. Apply for that job. Book that trip. <laughs> Thanks for listening.